Howdy folks, and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making old-fashioned peanut butter pinwheels. Now, this recipe has sugar, 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 and more sugar, and this is a, a recipe for a really big batch because this is another one of those candies that uh, you make and give away. And if you know how to make these around here, people expect you to give them some when you make a batch. They are very popular, and nowadays you can buy them in all the grocery store delis and stuff, but they're not the old-fashioned pinwheels, the kind that you remember from when you were a kid. And that's what we're making today. You're going to need about four pounds of uh, confectioner sugar or powdered sugar, and that's actually two bags. How much you need will depend on a lot of different things, the humidity being a big one. Um, another one being how much you mix it, um, how hot your syrup gets, all kind of stuff like that. And you're going to need two and a half cups of regular granulated sugar, a half a cup of corn syrup, and half a cup of water. We're going to bring that to a boil on the stove and make um, a syrup out of that. And you need three egg whites again. We're going to whip those egg whites and then add the syrup to it and that's what's going to make our base. And you need peanut butter. Now, one of the problems with these pinwheels that you buy in stores is they don't have any peanut butter on them. With all this sugar, if you don't put your peanut butter on kind of thick, you're just going to be eating a piece of sugar. It has to have that peanut butter to balance out the taste and really make the candy good. So I put plenty of peanut butter on mine. Just make sure you've got plenty and you put it on however you want. But once we mix up our egg whites and get our syrup boiling, what we're going to do is we're going to add powdered sugar to it until we get it to the consistency of a dough. Then we're going to dump some more sugar out and knead it like a dough. So you want to make sure whatever surface you're working on, you've got it covered good. Um, I used plastic wrap because it kind of sticks together and that sugar is really messy. If you can get wide um, wax paper, that works great, but my wax paper is only like this wide and that just is not wide enough to knead this on. When the kids were little, I used to use paper bags that I would get my groceries in, but you can't get paper bags anymore. They were great for Christmas bacon. But let's get these egg whites over here and we're going to pour them in our mixture bowl and we're going to bring our ingredients for our syrup over and we're going to heat this to about the same temperature that we did the first batch of syrup that we put in the divinity which is where we're getting strings it's going to form a syrup but it won't be um, super thick. We're going to go about 240 degrees or so on this. You don't have to stir this a whole lot, just occasionally and keep an eye on it while it's heating. And it's going to take about five minutes once it reaches a boil to get it to that stage where it forms strings. If you want to set a timer, it makes it a little bit easier. cook this on about medium high. If you just turn it on medium, you're never going to get hot enough. You'll be cooking all day. This is another one of those recipes too where if you can get an extra set of hands in the kitchen, you know, a teenager or drag your husband in the kitchen and get him to pour your syrup in, it's much easier if you have a hand mixer. 
Um, if you're not using a stand mixer, when you start adding your syrup, just like the Divinity, you're going to add it a little at a time and then mix it, add it some more, mix it. But if you have a stand mixer, you can just pour it in real slowly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and whip up my egg whites while my syrup is cooking. <laughs> whites are nice and fluffy but I'm gonna scrape the sides of my bowl just to get off any um, eggs that aren't beaten and mix them in with this sometimes egg whites can throw some pretty big chunks up on the side of your bowl and they won't be whipped up so you want to make sure you get all those off And you do want to make sure you get your egg whites really, really stiff like this. I mean, you can see they are solid. My syrup is at a pretty good boil now. And from this point, it will take about five minutes for it to turn into a, a thick syrup and start to get those strings. So just kind of keep an eye on it. You will want to stir it a little. I mean, you certainly don't have to do it constantly and let it cook for about five minutes. We're getting pretty close, but we're not quite there yet. When you're testing this to see if you're getting the, the strings, you do want to kind of um, stir your spoon around in it just a little bit and not just dip your spoon in it and then pick it back up because your spoon cools down as soon as you take it out and you won't really get a true picture of what your syrup is doing, what temperature it's at. Oh, we're starting. Yep, there we go. I think we've got it. Okay. We're gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna turn my mixer back on and I'm gonna add this half of it and then I'm gonna add a little bit of the powdered sugar and then I'm gonna add the other half and then I'm gonna add the sh powdered sugar a little at a time until this turns into dough. And um, I may have to, or I probably will have to change my mixer attachment. I got this mixer last year so I haven't made this candy with this mixer yet. So we'll see, but I don't think this whisk will do it. I'm going to start about medium. You don't want it too high because you don't want to sling your syrup out, but you want it fast enough so that it's going to mix this in and not just cook your eggs. Now, if you're doing this by yourself with a stand mixer, or I mean with a hand mixer, you're just going to have to pour a little in and mix it and pour a little in and mix it. I did turn my mixer up for just a minute to really mix that good and then back down to around medium and like I said I'm just going to start adding this sugar in real slow about a half a cup at a time. Again I turn the mixer up and then back down and I'm going to pour the rest of my syrup in now. Don't forget to put some water in your pot because that stuff will turn into a rock. I'm setting my mixer on about medium and I'm just going to start dumping this sugar in real slow. Go a little bit lower.
I am going to change my mixer attachment here. This is getting pretty thick, but I think I'm going to use the paddle instead of the dough hook because it'll do a better job mixing it. Right now, this is really fluffy, and that's exactly what you want. I said we're just going to keep adding the sugar until it turns into a stiff dough that we can knead and roll out. This is such a messy recipe, and it is time to scrape the bowl. And I still don't have this anywhere close to a dough. It's way too soft. Okay, let's check again. Ugh. As soon as this starts to get doughy, it's really easier to dump it out and knead the rest of the sugar in it. Hmm. I don't think we're quite there yet. We're going to have to add a little more sugar in the mixer or we'll have a bigger mess than what I've already got. When I'm making all of my Christmas candy and stuff, you know, if I'm going to be making several batches of fudge and some of this and maybe some divinity to give away, I do this one last because after you make this stuff, especially if you make a batch this big, you're going to have to mop the kitchen and everything else. It's just loads of fun. It is starting to kind of climb up the sides of my bowl now, which tells me it's um, get, it's turning into a dough, and we might be able to dump it out and knead it now. I've got sugar stuck in the bottom of my mixer, and I talked about that in another video too, how these stand mixers do that, and you really have to watch it. Um, when you're creaming butter and sugar for cookies and stuff or you'll have half your ingredients stuck in the bottom of your bowl. I'm going to knock this down in the bowl and mix it just a tiny bit because that sugar that's stuck in the bottom of the bowl um, is lumpy and I don't want those hard lumps in my finished dough because you'll taste them in the candy. That's pretty good right there. And you can see here where it's trying to climb out of the bowl. That means it is definitely turned into a dough. And if you're using a hand mixer, it will be climbing up your beaters at this point. It shouldn't be real sticky right now, and mine's not. I can touch it with my fingers and it's not sticking to them. Um, and I am able to push it or scrape it off of this blade. Now, how much of this we use, I really don't know. Um, some of it, of course, will be wasted like it always is when you roll out um, any kind of dough with flour. But you want to put out a pretty generous amount. And I'm going to start with that. That's probably two cups. Okay, just spread your sugar out a little bit on... Uh, whatever kind of surface you're working on. If you've got wax paper or do the plastic wrap, scrape your bowl out as good as you can and dump this out in the sugar. You want to kind of take any pieces like this that have fallen off and stick them back on your main um, ball of dough and squeeze it all together. And then you're just going to start kneading it until it gets to a consistency where you can roll it out. Well, right now mine's still really kind of crumbly. It's super mushy. Um, it's not very sticky though. It really isn't. Okay, this is already starting to get really firm and really smooth which is what I want. Um, and I've probably only got about half a cup of sugar kneaded in it, but I am gonna need some of this 
here when I roll it out. Okay, what I'm gonna try to do now is get this into some sort of a shape and it doesn't matter how you do it, if you wanna make it perfectly round or perfectly square or roll it out and make it long, but you wanna divide this into about four equal parts. So just kinda of shape it however you think you need to to divide it. I'm gonna kinda of do mine in a square. And I'm just gonna use my butter knife to cut it. Yep, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna set three of them over here to the side. Spread my sugar out again. And I've got some lumps in here, um, little pieces of dough that did fall off. You wanna kinda try to get them out of the way because like I said, they will change the texture of your candy. Somebody will get a big sugary lump of dough instead of a smooth peanut butter pinwheel. Okay, now I like to kind of shape mine into a little bit of a rectangle or square because what you're going to do is you're going to roll this out, spread the peanut butter on it, and then roll it back up. And if you make it round when you roll it out, then you're going to have tapered ends that aren't, you're going to have a lot of waste once you cut it. Put a little sugar on my rolling pin. And just kind of be gentle with this when you roll it out here. And you do want it more um, rectangle than square. If you made it a perfect square, your peanut butter pin wheels will come out like this big around, and you really want them about like that. So, I'm just kind of mashing the edges up a little bit with my hands, and then I'm gonna hit it with my rolling pin one more time before I spread the peanut butter on it. Just, I'm trying to keep from having so much on the end that's um, not even with the rest of the pinwheel. And I've got it pretty thin. Now, how thick you make it to is kind of up to you. I said a lot of the stuff I've seen in stores has really thick dough and just almost no peanut butter at all. And I like to roll mine out kind of thin and put a generous amount of peanut butter on it because this is basically sugar. And if you don't have the peanut butter on it, it's just not good. It's not any good. The flavor of the peanut butter mixed with this though is delicious. So again, you don't need anything real fancy, just a knife and you spread the peanut butter on. And how much peanut butter you put again is entirely up to you, just like how thick you make it. And I don't have my peanut butter quite as thick as my dough is. If you make it that thick, uh, it's hard to roll up and it's hard to cut. But I've got a pretty generous amount of peanut butter on there. And you just start. And that first little bit is not going to be super pretty, but that's okay. It'll be in the center and nobody will know. And you can see here how my peanut butter is squishing up as I roll it. That too is okay. And I'm getting some crack in here. I'm going to have to quit talking so much and start working faster. Okay, now at this point what you want to do is you want to take a piece of plastic wrap and you're going to wrap this up in the plastic wrap and you're going to put it in the refrigerator for about an hour before you slice it. Just roll it up like that and kind of twist the ends and stick it in the refrigerator. And how thick you slice it to just depends on what you want. You can go anywhere from a quarter of an inch on up and make them as thick as a half an inch. It really just depends on the cook who is making it. You do want to make sure though that you get enough peanut butter in there. It's just not good if you don't. 
But folks, while you're doing all this cooking and shopping and wrapping and getting and giving, don't forget about the greatest gift we've ever been given, and that's our Lord and Savior. And if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, He is the Son of God, and He came to earth and sacrificed Himself so that you could be forgiven and have eternal life. Christians all over the world celebrate his birth and his life around Christmas time. And that truly is the reason for the season. So from all of us at the Hillbilly Kitchen to all of you, Merry Christmas and God bless you. Thanks for joining us again. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.